In this particular lecture, let's understand what is state in React by taking a specific example. So let's go ahead and let's create a brand new component here to understand state. And let's name this particular component as counter.jsx. So this counter component is going to contain a value which is going to be the value of the count and we are going to be storing this value in terms of a state and we will also learn how this state value could be eventually changed by performing some action. So let's go ahead and let's define this component first. So I would say export default function counter. Let's make this thing return a simple div. And in this particular component, let's simply say we want to define the value of count. So I would say count value is and then over here, I will be creating a state variable which is going to display the count value which could be changed. All right, so let's now also add this components to the main app component here. So I'll include a counter here. This should be counter. All right. So now if I go back here, it says count value is and it's displaying absolutely nothing here, which is what exactly we expect at this point. All right. Now here in order to save the count value, we will be saving this count value inside a state. So what exactly is a state? State is nothing but it's the data that this component can hold over a period of time. It's some necessary information that the component needs to remember throughout the app's life cycle. So you can imagine that as we want to save some data inside this component, the state is like a component's memory. Now in order to specifically store the count value, what we do is we will be creating something called as a state variable. And a state variable is a piece of state combined together to form a component state. So for example, a single component could hold multiple pieces of data or multiple pieces of states and these small pieces of states are called as state variables. And these particular pieces of state combined together actually form the component's entire state. And another special thing about this state is that whenever the state's value changes, it causes this components to re-render. That means if the count value over here changes, this entire component which contains that particular state value re-renders. So now once we understand what state is, let's try to go ahead and create a state variable inside our application. Now in order to create a state variable, you cannot simply create a state variable just like any other variable, but to create a state in React or a state variable in React, you need to use something which is called as a use state hook. So in order to create a state, we have to go where we write the JavaScript code. So you cannot create a state in here and you need to type in const and then you need to create an array. And in this array, you need to define two things. So the first thing which you need to define is the state variable. So count, let's name our state variable as count. And after this, you also need to define a function which can change the value of this state variable. So once you have defined the state variable, you cannot directly manipulate that variable just by saying count plus one over here. Instead, you actually need a special function which sets the value for this count. So you have to include that specific function over here itself. So you need to give a comma and let's name that function as set count as it's going to set the value of this particular count state variable. And after this, you need to say this equals use state. So this use state is a hook which allows us to create a state variable count. And it also allows us to create a function which will set the value of count. So that means whenever I have to change the value of count, I could only do it through the help of this set count variable which I have. Now there's one more important thing which we need to do here and that is while setting the state, you can actually set the initial value of the count variable. So let's say initially you want the value of the count variable to be zero. So in this use state, you could also pass in zero as a value. So this actually sets the value of this count variable to zero at the initial position. So now let's go ahead and let's try to display the value of count over here. So in order to display the value of count, I'll use curly brackets here as I want to write JavaScript code and I would say count. All right, so if I save this, 
And if I go back here to the browser, as you can see, it says count value is zero. And if you have set the count value to something else, like let's say if you pass in one to this use state hook, uh, it says count value is one. All right, so for the moment, let's set the count value to zero here. And this is what it actually is. Now let's say you want to change the value of count over here whenever user actually interacts with some buttons which we will have over here. So in order to do that, let's first add a couple of buttons here. So right inside the div tag, let's go ahead and let's create a couple of buttons. So in order to create buttons, let's first enclose this counter into a tag of its own. Uh, so let me create an h1 tag here. So h1, let's take the closing tag and paste it at the end of the counter. So I would create a button, which is an HTML button, which says, uh, let's say increment. And let's say the job of this button is to increase the value of count every time we click it. So we have the button here and right now it does nothing. So now let's add the on click handler to this button. So on click and over here, we now need to pass in a function which is handle click. So this is the exact same thing which we have done a couple of lectures ago. So let's now define this handle click function. And we could define that function here as well, but it's a general rule in React that the state of a component should be declared at the top of the component. So we will declare that handle click function here. So function handle click. And over here, let's first try to go ahead and try to set the value of the count variable as we would do in normal JavaScript. So here I could say, take the value of count and increment the value of count by one. So this is plain simple JavaScript. However, if we try to do something like this, as you can see, it gives us an error and we have that particular error and this does not work either. And this happens because if you hit refresh on this one and click on this one, it says assignment to a constant variable. So as this is a const variable, you cannot change the value of that variable just like that. Instead, if I want to increment the value of count, I have to use this set count function. So using that function is quite easy. The only thing which you need to do is you need to say set count and to this function, you simply need to pass in the new value of the count. So the new value of the count is going to be the current value of count, which is count. So we obviously could access the value of the count here, but we cannot change it directly. So here, the current value of count plus one is going to be the new value of count. And therefore we pass that value to set count. All right. So let's see if this works. So I'll go back here, hit refresh to make sure we don't have any errors here. And if I click on increment now, let's see what happens. So if I click on increment, the value of this count changes. If I click on increment, the value changes one more time. Now, another interesting thing to note here is that if you actually open up this particular component, if I click on increment, as you can see, the value of this count actually is changing and it is kind of reflected over here as well in the HTML. So that means now we have a variable which could hold dynamic data inside our components and that data could be changed whenever an event happens. So state allows us to do that. Now as practice, let's go ahead and let's add another button here called as a decrement and let's make that functional as well. So let's say just like the increment button, we also want a button which decrements the value of this count variable. So in order to do that, I'll add a button here. And the on click of this button is going to be some other function, but let's say this thing says decrement. And now let's define another function here and let's name that function as decrement. And let's define that decrement function here right after the handle click. So function decrement. And over here, we will make use of the set count function itself. But this time we will take the count value and subtract one from that value. All right. So if we do that, and if we go back here to the browser, if I click on decrement now, the value of count decrements. And if I click on increment, the value of count increments. And if I hit refresh on this one, the value of counter is set back to zero. And that's because whenever we reload the page, the use straight hook would be executed and it sets back the value of the count to zero. So to maintain a proper naming convention, it's actually better if you name this particular function as increment 
So let's change the name of the function over here to increment as well. All right. So now our counter and the buttons are functioning absolutely fine. So this is how you could go ahead and make use of state in React. So I hope this kind of gives you an idea about how to create a state variable in React and how to change the value of a state variable when a certain event like a click of a button happens and also how to actually set the value of the state variable using the set count method. So you could create multiple variables here and whenever you create a new variable using the use state hook, you always, always include the function which changes the value of that state variable as well. So that's it for this lecture and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.